Let's move over and talk more about the husband a little bit uh, because this is a, a very bizarre dynamic. Again, one, I, I'm not trying to rain on the parade that everybody seems to want to have for Gypsy right now, but again, I, I'm not one to say, let's go cheer on something that looks like it could be potentially very dangerous or disastrous for someone who's already only experienced drama and trauma their entire life. Let's talk about the profile of someone who gets online or, you know, writes that letter into uh, the jail and says, hey, I think you're really cute uh, to someone like this uh, who was portrayed in the documentary that he watched uh, as being a mentally and physically disabled child. Uh, that, to me, is is a little bit disturbing, or very disturbing, especially considering his career was working with disabled children. And now, mm -hmm. oh, I... I got a thing for her. Unpack that a little. Yeah. yeah, you know, he presents very affable, very kind, um, which kind of surprised me that he presents as well as he does. But there are many layers to people. It's like peeling an onion, and it is a strange thing to do. We study a lot of people who write to prisoners. What is that all about? Mm -hmm. And it's usually someone that has often very low self-esteem. They don't feel that they're marketable out in the real world as far as dating or finding a partner. And a prison prisoner represents a captive audience. The prisoner is very emotionally needy. And so usually this person that tries to romance a prisoner is also emotionally needy. So you have two not so healthy pieces coming together and it's generally not good. They tend to be also prone to fantasy and often it's a rescue fantasy, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm gonna be in this case again, Prince Charming that can swoop in and really provide what this person needs and change their life. So they get a sense of power with yeah. that. And for a person who's disabled, even more so. and. She needs a parent more than she needs a husband right now because, as I said, she doesn't have the skills to know how to be a partner in an adult way. The other piece of it which is concerning is there's often this sense of, well, I, I get a sense of basking in the glow of this famous person. And even if the person is famous for something negative, they still like the attention. And I don't think they're consciously aware of this because a lot of these things happen under underneath conscious awareness. But that sense of wanting to be powerful, of having somebody that really needs them emotionally, that's not going to leave them because they have impairments or deficits in certain ways, and the attention seeking. So you put all those things together and, you know, we don't really know what this guy is like. We just see this affable presentation right now. So yeah. there could be a dark side. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to, to make of him. I'm just going off of the data points that we have and what we know of, of where he was working, what he was doing, what he has said he did to get in contact with her. Um, and just it, you put those pieces together, and if you're not just looking at it through rose-colored glasses, it doesn't. It looks weird. It looks like there's there's something off. At least that's that's my opinion of it. What was your take on the interactions that we saw uh, with them, uh, both in that documentary and also uh, in in recent interviews, in terms of control or controlling? Does this seem like someone who is a controlling person? One would uh, almost assume uh, that there's some element of that if you're initially hooking up with somebody who is locked in a cage uh, and yeah. can't leave, uh, that seems like probably appealing to someone who finds that uh, to be a need in a relationship. Yeah, because the person who has the power is the person who's the more mature one, who has real world skills. I mean, I can't imagine she knows about credit cards or how to manage her money or how to write a check, you know? So he's gonna be in this father position. And, that may work for her for a while, but usually in those kind of relationships, when the, let's say, the less developed person grows up, then that relationship no longer fits. And one of the things I noticed that it just kind of made my skin crawl is how often he calls her baby. Yeah. And that's that's his term of endearment for her. And, you know, every now and then somebody saying, hey, babe, or something like that, that seems normal. But to consistently refer to your partner as baby, and it's kind of got this, this little, you know, like I'm nurturing you quality. And that's also something that I tuned in on. And I just said that 
just doesn't feel right. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a lot of those moments, I thought, where it felt bizarre. I mean, it, and the, the aspect they were speaking of earlier, this fantasy, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but I do remember seeing it in one of the documentaries, him flat out saying, I do believe I am her Prince Charming. I do yeah. believe I was sent here to fulfill this role. Uh, that's not how the world works. That's not how relationships work. It's not a you're a Prince Charming and you were sent here on this mission. No, you you were attracted to someone who presented as a disabled child. And then yeah. you sent a letter in and you're trying to normalize this with my friend sent a letter to Tiger King and I'm going to write to Gypsy Rose. Uh, yeah. th there there seems to be a level of, of knowledge here, at, at least somewhat on the surface of, yeah, this is a little bit weird. This is a little bit off and having to constantly justify your relationship with, I never intended to be in a relationship with her. Although you, you talked to her and, and, and praised her for the first part of your letter and then gave your life story Mm -hmm. that, that, that the two are incongruent statements. Yeah, very much, very much. And you can see how important he feels now mm -hmm. because she was released to his custody when she left prison and she needs him. And so I think this is a guy who maybe didn't feel important in many parts of his life or didn't feel marketable per se. And now he's got this very dependent woman and, you know, the world is watching and he's getting lots of attention. And, and apparently a lot of people do think he's wonderful. So, mm -hmm. as I said, he presents affable, but yeah. there's got to be layers there that are of concern. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and Press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.